Hi guys, it's been a while. A um, couple of reasons for that. I've been very busy with work. Uh, the company will be displaying on a major, uh, important trade uh, fair coming up uh, this weekend, rather, this Thursday, and be running for five days. A lot of work to do, so kind of inundated with that. In the spare time I do have, I have been preferring, at the moment at least, to um, uh, add um, videos to my other channel and to produce content there, my, my gaming channel. Uh, I know a couple of you are subscribed to my other channel as well, and for those of you who are interested, yeah, I've been making some new videos about strategy guides, builds, and general stuff like that. So, uh, <clears throat> if interest uh, exists, then uh, I suggest you head over there. It's a Stardust LP, which stands for Let's Play. Stardust LP. So, keep moving on. Oh, we're not moving on to business just yet. But thank you to everyone who uh, pushed me beyond the thousand mark. Uh, I suppose that is a milestone in every YouTuber's life. Uh, you know, I never really want, I never specifically sought out many subscribers, but if my content makes sense, and people appreciate it, and most importantly, I'm able to help people in some capacity, even if it's just uh, turning on the switch and that light bulb, which was already kind of on but needed the final push, as I've discovered that, you know, often the case with men that we just don't realize what's going on, or they do, they know something is amiss, and yet they're kind of uh, fuzzy about what it is exactly. So thanks to everyone. Um, specifically, I'd like to thank Barbarossa first and foremost, because he's the one that basically got me here. Um, I'd also like to thank, uh, thank Pine Grove, i.e. Uh, Bernard Chapin at Chapin's Inferno. He's been very inspiring as well. Um, I'd like to thank Girl, thank Girl Rights What for responding to my, my content and <laughs> not ignoring me, the YouTube giant that she is. Um, and also, uh, Brocky Mr. E, uh, despite our major, major disagreement on certain issues, um, I appreciate his, his two cents on a lot of things. Well, getting back to business. Uh, oh, yes, and this, because of the trade fair coming up, this will probably be the last video for about another week, so I'll do what I can. In this video, I'll be talking about A, a female hypo agency, and B, suggestions for the MRM or MRAs, because this is actually a video response as to what Barbarossa should do. First part, female hypo agency. As a result of my Xbox culture video, I had a viewer, one of my, or a subscriber, I don't know which one she is, uh, who was either, uh, yeah, well, she happens to be female, which is very rare, and she made the rather uh, enlightening comment that, and there was an agreement with me that you know, females are just deeply insecure and hence their need to invade male private spaces, male spaces where males feel comfortable doing what males do. And it got me to think about a concept, and once again gather material from uh, Girl Rights What, where she talks about uh, male hyper-agency. I'd like to talk about uh, female hypo-agency. Hypo, female hypo-agency, and I don't know if this is neologism, and if it is, then uh, I'm happy for, for, uh, for finding it, or discovering, or making it, and if not, then uh, uh, that's good too. I think female hypo-agency has basically one source, and I've been thinking about this a lot. We've often talked about the fact that the vast majority of females bring tremendously, precious little to the table, save their uteruses and their vaginal orifices, and i.e. their offer of sex. Um, I will postulate in this video that the female feeling of insecurity is a self-perception issue relating to self-perceived hypo-agency, and that this self-perceived hypo-agency is a derivative of females inner and perhaps also outer realization that they too realize that the only thing they bring to the table for the most part is their uh, are their vaginas and uteruses and the sex that they offer men. That beyond that, most women don't bring anything intellectual to the table. They certainly don't bring a whole lot physically to the table. And so what you end up with is a person who whose sole value um, not just the value that men ascribe to her, of course, that is their essential value, but as a, as a result of the value that men forcibly must ascribe to them, uh, ascribe to them, the, you know, the 
fact that they're basically just offering sex, that they realize themselves that they have very little to offer. However, rather than concentrating on themselves and improving themselves and their abilities, which are, I think it's entirely possible, I do think there are certain biological imperatives which do place male intellect at the very bottom and the very top, and females in the good middle average. But um, there are a few achieving females out there, and there probably could be more. Um, but the way to do that is to essentially renounce um, the current fact that the only commodity that females have to offer is their vagina. If a female, along with males, acknowledge this fact, uh, if we all acknowledge this fact, we realize that that's pretty much what females have to offer, which leads to a deep feeling of insecurity. After all, the only thing you had to offer was an anatomical orifice that you were born with that was congenital, and that was the only thing you could offer in terms of uh, value, even though it's a highly, highly prized thing, as evidenced by all the manginas and 99% of the male population. Uh, you're going to end up in a difficult position. And I think this will ultimately lead to deep feelings of insecurity and the perception of oneself as uh, suffering from hypoagency. That is the lack of, lack of ability to, to act upon things and to uh, affect things. To affect things and to produce no effects. Um, and in order to compensate for that, it appears that females are very willing to gather in a mob mentality group whereby the perception in such a mob mentality group is that there are there is strength in numbers and the illusion thereby produced in such a group that there is strength in numbers is that a one's argumentation and whatever uh, whatever the case might be regarding the topic one's arguing about and one's sense of of cogency and the ability to convince is actually strengthened by the group, whereas it's actually not. Um, just because a lot of people agree about something doesn't mean it's true. Um, you know, back in the days, everyone seemed to be in agreement that the Earth was a, uh, well, essentially a, a giant cube. Um, that turned out to be wrong. So there's no, there's no necessary, there's no truth content necessarily in large groups agreeing with each other. In fact, I I posit the idea that. It's far more, far less likely, um, because large groups are often symbols of, not always, but often symbols of comfort zone, where people feel comfortable, rather than uh, symbols of truth content and zones where, yes, where verity is the um, the main issue. So we end up. Let's backtrack a bit here. Females basically only have their sex and vaginas to offer, which leads to that personal perception of insecurity because that's all you have and you know that's that's a limited commodity as well it run, runs uh, out pretty quickly uh, on the timeline which leads then to in my opinion a perceived sense of hypo agency there's no reason in theory at least why women couldn't achieve at least to some extent the things that men could intellectually but they seem to have very little interest in doing that rather rather than bettering themselves and improving themselves, what they end up doing is gathering these mobs, appealing to, say, state power, basically appe appealing to uh, bully powers in order to enforce what they think is right, or in order to at least uh, persuade themselves and assuage themselves of their feelings of inad inadequacy and uh, insecurity. The more the more join in, the better, because, and then it, it Groups that, 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 that are a derivative that, whose formation uh, is, is a result of people just wanting to feel comfortable with each other are invariably not going to see the, the logical fallacy that such a group, just by dint of the numbers, can very readily lack truth content uh, with regards to the topics it might be advocating. And its real reason for being there is to make the people feel good about themselves. But, since women totally miss the truth content aspect, they jump to the other aspect, which is, I feel comfortable, we're all right, and they beat you over the head with a hammer. Interestingly enough, you'll often see this hammer wielded in the form of the, the male henchman, 
The male henchman is nothing but a, nothing else but a, a mangina, a white, not necessarily a white knight, but certainly a mangina, one who kowtows to the female will, and one who denigrates himself in the eyes of the female in an effort to garner their favor in order to gain access to their most coveted vaginal orifice. That's what happens. And combined, the combined might, or I would rather say false might, but it is a, a might in the sense that we suffer the repercussions of it, of the female uh, mob mentality using male henchmen to enforce their will uh, is, is devastating. It's devastating because we have an entire organization that we call the state or government that's organized around this uh, strange uh, genesis of things. And the consequence of that is what we see in the divorce courts, what we see in all sorts of things, financial aid, women's help centers, women curves, uh, you know, women only gyms, women only tennis clubs, and so on and so forth. Apropos, I thought it was a very nice video that Save the Men made right after that, uh, that previous video uh, of mine about his very short, sweet to the point. It was an excellent video. He talked about Joe, his friend Joe in the cycling club, who was essentially uh, jettisoned from the club due to a conglomerate of wenches who did not accept his very logical reasoning that he had no desire to help fix their tires or, or bicycles um, because he wasn't going to be riding with them anyway, so what was the point? Um, therein lies, of course, the expectation that the male, the henchman, is there to do the bidding of the females. Of course, many others apparently pitched in. Jonah is no longer part of the, the cycling club, and Save the Men, save the men apparently, uh, based on what he said, doesn't seem to be doing that too often either. Um, you know, women basically creating nonsense. So essentially what we have is an epidemic. We have an epidemic which has now reached catastrophic proportions at the levels of government, at the levels of the interpersonal relationship, um, and really and in the family, of course. I mean, we see that that's the melding of the, the state's fueled mob mentality and, uh, and the interpersonal. Uh, well, that, that projected onto the interpersonal relationship. Terrible stuff. All because women correctly perceive themselves as, uh, well, lacking agency save for their vaginas. That is the trump card. The problem here is that, as I've mentioned before, rather than bettering themselves, increasing their, their, their intellectual faculties, improving themselves in general, they simply resort to mob, uh, to mob to the mob mentality and gang up on people. They could, instead of doing that, be proving to us, if they could, us men, that yes, they can play games as well as us. They can do all of these things as well as the rest of, as, as men can, but rather than, than screaming at us and telling us that, that they can do it, they actually, in fact, do it, remember? It's a lot of claptrap coming from the mob, female mob mentality, along with their henchmen. Their henchmen are always noticeably silent, if, you know, um, if you've observed. They, they just kind of do their bidding or they'll put down the other men, um, all in an effort to garner um, favor, in an effort to gain access to the coveted vaginal orifice. Bad stuff, no doubt. The question is, what can be done all? What can be done about all of this? At the end of the day, precious little. However, I am personally of the opinion that the principles of a man going his own way can lead to the eventual erosion. Um, and then implosion of the vaginal power hypo-agency model, as I will coin it now. How is this achieved? When men consciously give up their vaginal dependency and renounce relationships with females on anything more than a, on, on a essentially romantic level, um, because that's where sex and uh, the desire for the vaginal access uh, takes place, you could see, in the long run, a transformation on a societal level, if, if we had the numbers, that is. The numbers are, it's always a question of numbers. Get enough numbers behind you and you can, you can actually affect some changes. You could see a, 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 a change, a massive change, possibly in the behavior of females. Initially, what you probably would get would get more mob mentality, more 
ganging up more uh, employment of, of a mangina henchmen in order to assail the men who correctly turned their backs on the badgerly endowed. But um, in the long run, it would force women to reflect on their own feelings of insecurity, their own hypoagency, and realize that uh, these days, bringing your vagina and uterus to the table, well, that's just not cutting the mustard anymore. You need a little bit more than that, honey. Uh, I think every, at the heart of a man going his own way, or the, the, if you want to call that a movement, or I don't know how to put it, a, a mentality, the mentality behind men going their own way, that's what lies at the core, in my opinion. That realization that that is simply not enough. You remember the video where Barbarossa talked about commensurate compensation? He hit the nail on the head. It is no longer commensurate for you to essentially give up your life in, in virtually every facet. Because, so as a, as a result, you'll get, uh, as, again, as a consequence of that, you get occasional and rather whimsical access to a vaginal or orifice without the guarantee that the sex is even that good to begin with. Hardly worth the effort, hardly worth the trade-off. Once again, this is the issue of depowering and decoupling females from, from their, uh, their perceived source of power. In the long run, this would have the consequence that it would improve the female mentality. So quite possibly, although I have my doubts, they could be semi-competitive uh, with men in a lot of fields. Because they would actually concentrate on improving themselves uh, as opposed to bitching, complaining, and ganging up together, and then employing uh, magi and henchmen to beat, beat up the rest of us which is what they currently do, and basically only what they do. Um, this would take a lot of muscle work, uh, muscle in the metaphorical, transcendental sense. In order to get to the levels, the echelons I'm talking about, it would require a long time. And I don't expect to see this in my lifetime. Instead, I'm much before I drop dead, I'm much more likely to see, and we all are much more likely to see, um, simply an increase in the the depth and, uh, and frequency of the, the mob mentality, gang gang up on the guys uh, and employ the male, uh, the magi and the henchmen approach to things. That seems to be uh, on the rise. Um, I hear it all the time, you know, uh, invading, I mean, are there any all men gym, gyms? I, I don't think so. Uh, yet you have dozens of only female gyms, and so they can feel comfortable. It's all about feeling comfortable. And this, of course, leads to the further realization that maybe I'm entirely wrong, that men, as a, on a general whole, uh, as an a, are, are devoted to, much more devoted to the abstraction of truth than women are. Uh, you don't want to overly generalize this, but, I mean, there are plenty of people who, who would rather um, enjoy a comfortable lie than uh, experience the truth, regardless of how uncomfortable and unpleasant that truth might be. But on the whole, men are much more inclined to accept truth, um, and even if it's unpleasant, and to appreciate the truth over fe merely feeling comfortable. Um, you know, if I, have, if I have cancer and I'm about to drop dead because of it, I'd prefer to know that, personally. Um, I also wanted to know the bad stuff about the tumor rather than postponing it. So, and women seem to inevitably be more about comfort. Whether this is entirely biological or a consequence of biological imperatives, which then arose uh, at some point in time in the distant past and then transform themselves into a social vehicle is kind of irrelevant because regardless of whether it's a few, uh, um, one or the other or a fusion and mix of the biological and the sociological or the social, the societal, what we have is a pattern that has been recurrent for uh, at least, at least dozens of millennia, if not much, much longer if you hark back to the, um, the various other hominid ancestors we have. So how to break that, that, I don't know. So on the one hand, I'm not hopeful. Never hopeful, actually. I'm not hopeful. But on the one hand, you could, theoretically, as a consequence, by withdrawing their trump card from, from them, forcibly so, by turning your back on the, on the female relationship, you could, in fact, force them to think about things. But much more likely would lead to, lead to more mob mentality, more, uh, more of the same, more of what we've become accustomed to. Um, and it is increasing. We see this constantly. Regarding, so, and much, so I don't know what they really think about. These are just ideas I'm throwing uh, out on the table. And a final note, engage, I, I really have thought about this extensively, and I've come to the conclusion that men 
who claim to be MRAs who are endorsing having relationships with females, regardless of whether they believe there are good females out there or not, are really essentially endorsing something that's counterproductive to the movement as the whole, as a whole and really counterproductive to men. Because regardless of what people claim, a man is, is primarily and will always primarily be interested in a, in a romantic relationship, if you want to term it as such, in the, the vagina of a female and her whatever other secondary sex characters she has, her ass or tits or what have you. And because of that, Every time you engage in a relationship with a female, you are empowering her in, the, in, that, in that one aspect of her being, which apparently the sole aspect of her being that has any value. And you are encouraging the insecurity and the, not un, apparently not only perceived, but actual hypoagency on their part. That is why I really, really, really can only stress that not in trying to engage in, in, in sexual relationships with female, any sort of real relationship, um, uh, you know, Fucking duck, fine. But um, beyond that, I, I, I have, I'm really of the opinion that engaging in relationships with females is counterproductive to men's issues. Because also, in order to, continue to keep the female placated in a relationship, you inevitably have to make concessions, which will cost you A, your identity, B, your freedom, and um, will, will inevitably put you much further away from the camp you would per perhaps like to be in. Um, so, relationships with females are not only uh, a waste of time, just in terms of money and all this other stuff, but they're tremendously costly in other ways. And I think actively pursuing relationships with females, regardless of what their intentions might be, and regardless of how you, how you might perceive them, uh, further leads to more hypoagency and more men, mob mentality on the part of the female. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, as Barbara Russell implied in one of his videos, at best, and I'm just paraphrasing here because I don't remember the exact words, we have a very tenuous truce that exists between the sexes. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, the people who will stand by you when it's all said and done are most likely your male friends, not the female. Not the female. Um, the people who have your back are, are your friends who are more like, most likely to be male. So we as a whole need to stop empowering females and their agency which leads to the, the muck and the mess that I just talked about in Xbox culture and the save the men talked about in his video. It really needs to be done and encouraging men to seek out the so-called few good eggs and, and the microbacteria and then the haystack or rather the cosmos I think it's a better way of describing the microbacteria in the cosmos is, uh, is really counterproductive to both the men themselves pursuing it and to other men. That's my opinion. I've thought about it extensively, and um, regardless of whether people really think it's inevitable that w men and women have to come together, um, yeah, I guess on some level, you know, we all like to stick our dicks in vaginas, but apart from that, we don't really need to come together too much more than that, in my opinion. Uh, anyway, that's what I have to say about that. Um, on a completely different note, in response to Bob Ross's video, what can men do, what can he do? Start a blog, man. Uh, I, I don't have a blog myself. Uh, I don't really have the time. But you already have a Facebook. I mean, you have you have so much potential in your channel and the, your presentation skills that you could go far. You could really, you could create your own radio channel. I've mentioned this before and so have others. So a blog might be a helpful idea. But I forgot who, but someone, uh, one of my subscribers, a couple of times actually, put forth the idea of, um, of, of, real, of the real world. At some point in time, the internet is fantastic. It has advantages and disadvantages. Disadvantages is you get flagged and yada, yada, yada. Advantages are you, it's huge. And so it's hard to track people down. And, um, so you can pretty much post your ideas as they come to you. But um, at some point in time, if men really um, want, need, I think on some level we need some organization. I don't mean an organization like the ACLU, right? but I mean organizational skills. That's what I mean by using substantive organization. So we need some organization, and the organization, in my opinion, can probably only be achieved through real-life meeting and real-life discussion. Now, a couple of suggestions towards this end. As, just as an example, I know that both Barbarossa and Armageddon uh, dwell in my former home city of New York City, and so, uh, well, I guess it'll always be my home city, so it's not former. Anyway, sorry for rambling. So it's quite possible to uh, create a meetup group there. I mean, there's this kind of semi-cheesy site, but it's useful if you have certain interests. Meetup.com. There are interests for everything. I don't see why it wouldn't be, uh, you know, a men's group. Although who knows, it might get shut down there. 
be possible. Basically, what I'm saying in large urban centers, if, for example, I still were living in London, I would have met up with probably with a bunch of guys over there, and, um, but uh, I'm not. So, or in shape, uh, Bernard in Chicago, which is a reasonably large city. Um, all these large urban centers offer possibilities, um, or I, I, be I believe, well, I, mean, I know Joe Rice was in Vancouver, so guys were over there. It's a fairly, um, I don't know if she's in, no, I think she's in Vancouver City. You know, anyway, Victoria, I'm not really sure exactly where she's located, which isn't that important, but it, it's large enough where you could uh, you know, find found a group. A little more difficult when you're living kind of uh, off the map. At the moment, I'm, I'm kind of living off the map, and I don't think I'll have a big opportunity in the next few years to uh, to live in, in a large uh, urban center. A lot. If I do go back to Asia, I will do, but it won't really be the same thing. Uh, it's not the same as living in a large Anglo-Saxon city. But th that's basically in my suggestion that at some point in time, uh, you know, things need to get off the ground, i.e., get off the internet ground because. Um, the internet is as, as, as useful as it is as a catalyst, and as a catapult, uh, it needs to go beyond that. If it, if it can't go beyond that, then at the end of the day, what, regardless of our content, it is going to just amount to blowing hot air because it won't affect changes upon reality itself. Um, that's not to say that we haven't affected changes. I mean, I get lots of PMs, and I'm sure others have, that you know, we've helped guys out, and they're, they're beginning to realize and recognize the truth, and that's really important. But uh, we need organizational skills beyond just posting our videos. And so that's my suggestion. Um, the big, biggest way to save your content, Barbarossa, and everyone else's for that matter, is by meeting in person and discussing uh, these ideas through intellectual discourse and, discuss, and, and, um, and talking about them and basically um, passing these ideas and, and, and this content on to other people. I mean, that way, until, they, until the, the, you know, the Gestapo comes and kills us all, empowered by the females, probably uh, love doing that, um, you know, that way it, it stays in, uh, in, in people's heads. Beyond that, of course, um, you know, people talk in real life as well. They talk on the internet, sure, that's how we get to know this stuff, but, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe Joe, maybe Joe's found out about this through Save the Men, and Maybe Joe talked to some other guy, and then talked about it to another guy, and so on. So you have a chain, cause, causal. It's a chain, a chain of causation, and, and these ideas are basically self-perpetuate. The internet is an important fulcrum of that um, self-perpetuation, but it needs to go beyond that. Ultimately, that's my opinion. And the best way to save your content is the dispersal of your ideas or any of our ideas um, on men's rights, and then going on the way, going their own way into reality. That's the best way to do it, eventually. Or rather, a combination of potent internet content backed up by reality-based organizational skills. Anyway, that's kind of what I had to say on, on a lot of different things. Been building up, and I've been really busy. Sorry about that. Um, you know, it just uh, happens that I can't post as frequently as I'd like to at the moment. So the next video will be at least another video, in the, uh, sorry, another week in the, in the making. And uh, once again, thanks to all the subscribers who uh, have been supportive, sent me messages, and thanks to all the people I've mentioned. And, uh, you know, until I drop dead, I'll keep on doing this stuff, I imagine. So uh, cheers to all, and uh, have a pleasant day or evening, depending on what time zone you're in. Take care.